Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Kitchen Pod. Can I get a ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> better, it gets better every week. It gets better every week. For those of you who are tuning in, as always, uh, this is Kitchen Party. We bring to you the coolest people in food, uh, be it food bloggers, culinary artists, chefs, uh, cookbook artists, all the great people who we absolutely love, who we love their food, and we bring them in to talk to you about what they're working on or what they've done. Now this show is a little bit different. This is about what folks, some of the top food writers in Los Angeles ate at Coachella. If you know anything about that, um, if you were watching the show last week and you watched us talk to some of the curators, you'll know that food is a huge part of this music festival. And we were just so blown away, we're like, it's not, it's just too big, we need two shows. Uh, my name is Babette Peppa, I'm the founder of Bakespace.com, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of Kitchen Party. Kitchen Party was sponsored by Cookbook Cafe, if you guys want to make your own cookbook, head on over there. Uh, my co-host, Renee Lynch, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Renee Lynch. I'm a writer and editor at the LA Times, and I work across a number of feature sections, including food and health. Excellent. Uh, for those of you who are following our chat, you know where you can chat live. Uh, you can go to Twitter, use Kitchen Party as the hashtag. You can also use it on Google+. If you're watching on the Google Plus page, we're paying attention to the chat. We're also, Renee is paying attention to the Twitter feed as well. So um, if we see something come in, um, we will ask the guests some questions. So. I'm really excited because uh, not only are we bringing back one former Kitchen Party guest who was one of our favorites, we also have a new guest, uh, Zach Brooks, who's here, who's uh, part of the, he actually founded the Midtown Lunch uh, blog. I don't know if you guys know anything about this blog. Uh, it started in New York City and now he's in Los Angeles and yeah. every time we do, every time we do a Tech Munch in New York, Zach is always somewhere else and I'm always like, please! Please, like, come speak at our conference. And he's like, I'm not here. So I'm super excited about getting a chance to finally meet you in person, even though... What, what part of L.A. are you in right now? Right now? I'm actually yeah. in Miami right now. Oh! But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, live, I live in Culver City. Oh, um, so you, cl you claim to live in Culver City. You're never around. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, unlike, I, I should live in Midtown, which I think is where Caroline lives, yeah. but... <laughs> you should. That's where I belong. That's where I should be living in, in L.A. <laughs> well, I'm so happy you're here because when I saw that you were going to Coachella, I think, I don't know if you posted it on Twitter or where I spotted it, but I was like, hey, if you're going there, take pictures of what you eat, which of course I know you were going to do, but I was like, we're going to have you come back next week and talk about it, and hopefully you had, had survived. Um, our next guest is also Caroline Pardia. Who is Caroline on Crack? I don't know if you guys are familiar with that blog. It's amazing if you want to know anything about cocktails in Los Angeles, you have to go to that blog because it is, not only is it delicious, but every time I look at your Instagram feed and I'm like, where is she? <laughs> Why am I not there? I keep waiting for my invitation to be like, hey, who wants it's, to meet me at, uh, you know. an invitation for you. <laughs> <laughs> Renee and I will take you up. So, my bad. Uh, I think we have to do an on-the-road uh, uh, kitchen party, right? Don't you think? <laughs> we'll, we'll just do oh, a bar crawl. Right. There you go. By the end of it, we'll be drunk and under the table. And <laughs> 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 like, thank you. Hi, babe. <laughs> well, first of all, did you guys survive Coachella? Obviously, you're here, but yeah. did you physically survive it? I'm a zombie. <laughs> Are you, you asking because I look old, and you're like, <laughs> and you're like how, how did you do it being as old as you are? Not how at did you all. Make we just know it was three epic days of partying and eating. <laughs> it's very difficult. It is a tough, tough three days. Now, did, had either one of you had, had been before, or was this your first time? Uh, it was my first time. Uh, and I've been before. Very cool. Now, uh, we, I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed this. Renee and I were talking last week with the curators, and it seems like this year was a total change, a shift, in not just, you know, great music, but also pairing it with great food. Uh, it seems like an amazing experience. Did you guys notice there that there was a lot of attention that was drawn to the food, or, or what was your first impression when you first walked in the gates? Go ahead, I mean, 
You want to go? You want me to go? <laughs> I said you go. I said you go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, I mean, yeah, I, I've been to Coachella before, and I'm a big fan of like you know Coachella food staples like. Uh, you know the the corn dog, the spicy pie, which of course everybody knows, uh, the the fries with the crab on top, and like I mean, there's they have typical like festival slash fair food at Coachella, um, but this year is the first year that they actually brought real you know great L A restaurants and chefs to Coachella, so I was pretty excited to go and check out all those new food options. Um, I don't know for sure that everyone at the festival felt that way, but I know that as a you know person who loves you know going to festivals like uh, Outside Lands in San Francisco or Lollapalooza in Chicago, which has a really serious like food element, I was excited that Coachella's kind of finally you know caught up to the to uh, to festivals like that and finally done some real good food while still leaving all the classics and the great Coachella food. That we've come to love. So they didn't touch any of the, the old stuff, thank God. But, uh, yeah, so I was pretty excited. Zach, what do you mean by that, that maybe some other people didn't feel that way? Well, it definitely, listen, I mean, Coachella is a is a really interesting event. It's evolved so much in all the years that, you know, it's been going on. And, you know, I would say, I mean, I completely, like, not based on science at all. I mean, at least half of the people are there to literally just party. They don't get, I mean, the show sells out before the bands are even announced. Uh, and, you know, people just see it as a three day party in the desert. They can go, they, you know, half the people are there just for the dance music, like the DJs, the EDM artists. And I think like there was some of the, some of the really cool food was right outside of, um, of, uh, shoot, what's the, I forget what the EDM is. Lab? Or uh, do, right, do lab. Uh, like a lot of the food was outside of there, and I think maybe there were a lot of some of those younger like EDM fans like didn't really care either way. And food is not really, you know, they're not there for a, uh, you know, to enjoy the the culinary aspects of Coachella. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Whereas a festival like Outside Lands, I think based on the the artists that they get, based on where it is in the city and what kind of vibe there is, I think a lot more people are there specifically for the food. Uh, and Coachella, you know, this was an interesting kind of, uh, I think, experiment for them this year to see what happens. Oh, can I say something? <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, so I, um, Nick Adler was the one who put the whole food thing together. Um, he, you know, works for, he does a vegan beer fest, and he works at the Roxy, and, like, back in November, he actually contacted me, because he wanted somebody to, like, that, ha that was, like, a foodie sort of thing to, uh, I guess, uh, get him connected with certain food places, and he wanted, like, an opinion on the sorts of people he wanted involved. He definitely wanted to go in a foodie direction and make it really desirable um, to that aspect. And, yeah, Coachella doesn't even have to try hard to sell tickets. They sold out in, like, six, like two hours. So um, they, they, they just wanted to, like, offer something great, you know. Just elevate it, and the dinner with like the the white tablecloth dinner that like you were right by the uh, Sahara stage. So people, uh, when they're doing the Soto dinner, people could like listen to Fat Boy Slim and just enjoy their like I don't know four course meal. Um, so it was just really, I mean, it was my first time there, um, and so I but I knew that there was a craft beer barn, and that's what like the first thing I wanted to see. <laughs> um, but, so I just like swam through the crowd and everything, um, but it was a little bit overwhelming. And you just kind of study the map and know where you want to go. And, um, so. Is that the first thing that you hit when you arrived? Uh, yes. <laughs> like I, I, I've been hearing all about it, and um, I just wanted to see what the, you know Tony uh, uh, Tony Jartsaway did. You know, like all his tap list, and then there was like Mohawk Ben, Tony Jartsaway, and Beer Belly, like all by this beer barn. Um, so it was amazing, but yeah. Hey guys, I don't know if can you guys hear that? Yeah, a what? Bit like, chuk, 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 chuk. I feel like I hear scratching noises. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Caroline, you know what it may yeah, be? My hair? You no, know, no, it may be that your mic on your um, this thing oh. when you talk, it may move against your clothes. So oh, okay, how about that? So perfect, so <laughs> perfect, great. <laughs> when you yeah. talk, just pull it, just pull it away. Sorry. Nobody, <laughs> nobody will know. <laughs> just kidding. 
Um, you know, <laughs> when you guys, before you guys left to go there, was there any food that stood out that you absolutely like put on your must try? Like when you when you left there, you're like, I'm gonna eat these three things. And you guys don't have yeah. to wait for us to say. You guys can talk. Yeah, I mean, uh, the uh, I I was really excited to try all the new the new stuff that they had out. I mean, I think the first the first stop I went to as soon as I got to the festival was uh, Night and Market, which is the you know Chris Yemmerung uh, Thai restaurant that's famous in L.A. and they just opened up a new location called Night and Market Song in Echo Park, and I was really excited. I mean, Thai, you know, there's you know, Coachella already has, like, crappy pad thai and, you know, stuff like that. So that was, like, the first stop. I'm looking for the photo right now. But uh, I was definitely excited to try that. You know, Mexicali Taco is another one of my favorite places in L.A. I think they were right next to Chris. Um, and I was also really excited to see the uh, the sushi stuff, as well as Orsa and Winston. Basically all the fancy uh, uh, stuff that they had brought from L.A. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm curious, how did you guys prep for this? Like, did you not eat anything, and this just like drove through the desert and got there, or what did you ha what did you do actually do prep wise? Because you knew you were going to be eating nonstop, right? Uh, well, for me, I actually I was I was more about drinking nonstop, <laughs> um, so I just made sure I you know drank a lot of water. Um, and then, like, also in the hottest part of the day, I didn't drink too much, whatever. So I was more focused on that. Like, Zach was looking forward to the food. I was looking forward to, like, Honeycutt being there and that beer barn. <laughs> so that was my focus. But. And I think I can speak for Caroline when I say her needing to prep to drink a lot and me needing to prep to eat a lot <laughs> really change our regular daily routine. <laughs> uh, I prepped by waking up and getting oh, drunk. Yeah. And ready for... I actually did the. I, I, like, I actually did do the. Um, on the way, I did do the. Uh, I don't know what you call it. The. Um, the typical cliched. I did the cliched. Uh, on the way to Coachella, I stopped and got a uh, date shake, and in and out burger, which uh. I feel like is uh, is the. Here, I'll show you my. Uh, my. I love what's you, it Zach. called. <laughs> You're my people. <pupil. laughs> uh, my. Cliched, uh, so my words, cliched prep, on the. You prep by eating. I like that. <laughs> in one collage, I took the cheesy wow. photo of my of my wristbands, and I did the In and Out Burger photo and the date shake, and uh, and then the palm trees in the in the blue skies, and that was it. I got it over with on Friday afternoon, and then didn't subject my Instagram followers to any other. Uh, Coachella cliches the rest of the weekend. <laughs> you know, I thought it was so cool, the wristbands. When I, I think I had read that you could go from place, like every time you go to a different stage, it would read like, wh like what song you were listening to at that time of day. Is that true? Oh, the, uh, the Spotify thing? I was wondering what that was. I saw the like installation for it and it said, and I was I was being the old person I am. I was too afraid to, uh, <laughs> so I didn't. That's pretty awesome. So if you scanned your wristband at the Spotify thing, then you could actually see what songs you were listening to. I think so. I think it will make like a playlist for you or something like that. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. really cool. But see, my biggest. Yeah. This, I love how you're like you're like I'm an old person because <laughs> I, I would think the same thing. My my fiance would literally would be like. I don't want anyone tracking me. I don't a. I don't want them to know I'm here, and b. I don't want anyone to like connect me with my Facebook page to get all my friends to download my data. It just gets <laughs> too crazy. But it seemed pretty cool. I thought it was pretty high tech. Yeah, yeah that sounds get awesome. To do that. <laughs> I, yeah, I wish I had watched this Google Hangout before I going. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Lesson for all of you watching at home, we bring you the knowledge. <laughs> hey, Renee. Oh, Renee, are you having any technical trouble? Yeah, it just kicked me out, but then it brought me right back, so I'm not sure what's going on. Can you hear awesome. me okay? You're perfect. Oh, I, lost my lower third. I lost my lower third. Now, what about this outstanding, or this outstanding in the field uh Lunch or this this dinner. Let me let me go to a let me go to a, a share of this real quick so people at home can can see what this looks like. Let's see. I don't know if you can see this now. Um, I mean, it looks pretty impressive. Of just, I mean, and obviously this is not a picture from the event, but it's it's this times like fifty. 
you know, with mm-hmm. two or three hundred people all having dinner at the same time. Did any of you guys get to go to that? I only jumped in at the tail end when they were cleaning up, and I was—I had a glass of wine, and Fat Boy Slim was there, so. Um, yeah, that Fat, Boy Slim ate, ate, Fat Boy Slim ate at one of the meals? No, no, Fat Boy Slim yeah. was at the Sahara tent. Oh, he was on the tent right next <laughs> yeah. to the Oh, I got yeah. really excited. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that, I, know. No. I would have liked to eat dinner with him. I know. It seemed like, but it was on Saturday night when it was crazy winds. So I was like, oh, so they probably had extra grit in their food. Yeah, it was a huge, <laughs> there, Saturday, there was like a huge sandstorm, which definitely made the fancy dinner... Uh, it's. I mean, it's really cool. I'm like. I think it's so awesome that they tried to do it. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see like what survives next year. Like how they end up changing things. I mean, it's definitely tough. You're basically paying two hundred and fifty dollars to eat a really nice meal, while some of the best music of the festival is going on. So it's kind of like you know, it's it's kind of tough. I know. You know, a lot of people uh, bought that package like just so they could get tickets to Coachella and then didn't even show up for the dinner. Really? No, I heard that they did show up. I mean, like, they were worried about it, but that people did show up. Yeah, I mean, I just mean some people. I just mean that, in general, like, as a trend, you know, oh. it's, you know... It's like you're, it's, you're spending that much for a dinner. It's like, well, why would you skip it? And it's a really nice dinner, you know? Oh, when Co- well, Coachella's completely sold out, and you have no way of getting in. You're like, hey, oh. you know what? I'll spend right. the extra money. I don't care. Right. Uh, That's a good point. But it's awesome. I mean, it, it, looked, it looked beautiful and super cool. Uh, Do you guys know and what they served? What'd you say? Do you guys know what they served? I don't have enough money to eat at one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it had, it had people like Soto. I guess they, you know, did one of the dinners at during that Black Boy Slim thing. So it was like well-known um, restaurants doing it. So. And I also think there definitely is a crowd at Coachella. There is a part of the crowd that uh, you know spends a lot of money to be there. That you know, that gets the, the, the camping in, in the backstage and, you know, and just goes for the weekend and would be really interested in having the, you know, $250 dinner. And I think, you know, over the next couple of years, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, that, like, that crowd, like, participating in stuff like, in stuff like that. Well, I was surprised, though, like, because I always assumed that Coachella was, like, these young bohemians and everything. But then when I was hanging out in the Rose Garden, and there was, like, some older people, like, people older than me. And I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> be, care, be careful, be careful what age you say. <laughs> I'm 42, so I'm old. <laughs> She's just talking about me. She saw me in the Rose Garden. <laughs> yeah, no, I, mean, that's well, that's, and I, I mean, that's how I think the festival has evolved so much over the last few years, right? Like, it was kind of like a young bohemian crowd and slowly but surely people with money have started coming in and it's evolved and I think the food is a reflection of that too. Yeah, and you're also talking about, you're talking about an event that attracts 90,000 people so, you know, five, you know, 500 richer, older people in the Rose Garden, you know, is, a, is just a small percentage but if that percentage is eating at, you know, uh, at uh, Sugarfish's new concept or at this Outstanding in the Field dinner, you know, they don't really have to sell so many tickets. I do have to say the Sugarfish booth in the Rose Garden, I think, was the biggest food triumph of the whole. Uh, some, of the, some of the fancier options, like, were kind of misses, you know, and didn't, didn't translate as well. And obviously it's, you know, first weekend. You've never done this before. I mean, I'm sure if you went to uh, Outside Lands the very first year, they brought in fancy San Francisco restaurants, I'm sure some of them, you know, had horrible times and some of them had great times. But the Sugarfish booth was, I thought, was unbelievable. It was so awesome. You have to tell us, what did you find? What, what, was, what was your favorite item? Yeah, so, it, well, it's, what they did was they set up this little, like, sushi bar. Here, I'll pull up the photo. Um, they set up this sushi bar where you literally could sit, you sat at the bar and you ordered, you know, like a like a sushi omakase of hand rolls, which I guess is this new uh, sugar fish concept that they're working on that's going to open in downtown L.A. at some point in the next couple months. Um, but they set up this booth here, in, and you literally could just step up, sit at the bar, um, and get three hand rolls for $15. And these are like sugar fish, like the best hand rolls you've ever had. Like the crab meat hand roll that you get at the end of your meal at Sugarfish, um, and three of these for fifteen bucks is actually like a huge bargain for Coachella. When a piece of when a piece of pizza costs seven dollars, 
and one of these hand rolls costs five dollars. Like you're, you know, it's it was almost <laughs> cheaper. Yeah, it was almost cheaper than what it would cost if you were in L.A., where everything else is such a huge markup. And it was really nice to sit down for fifteen or twenty minutes and like feel civilized after. You know, granted, this wasn't the VIP, so you had to be, like, you had to pay the extra money for the VIP to get to this, but it probably also wouldn't have worked if it was in the general admission just because, and by Sunday it was packed. The lines were, like, so long, like, word had gotten out. It was definitely one of the, uh, one of the more popular food options of the weekend by far. Caroline, did you go to that? I saw it, <laughs> but I'm vegetarian, so I was like, uh, you know, it didn't really Oh, that's right, that's right, me too. Yeah. But I, um, yeah, I went to Baco Mercat next door. But I have to say about the um, the fancier restaurants being in um, VIP, like you know, um, was it Crossroads and um, well, Crossroads was next to the Craft Beer Barn, but closer to the Do Lab. And yes. it turned out that I guess they weren't doing really well, so I think they moved. They ended up moving them and um, Night Market to the VIP areas um, for Sunday. Right. But, um, did you get to check that out there, Zach, at the VIP? Like, were you I, there for that? I didn't. I, uh, I didn't, but I did hear, and I heard that this weekend there's actually going to be some changes. I think a lot of the vendors who were outside of the Do Lab area, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the nicer vendors like Mexicali and Night and Market are both going to get moved to the VIP permanently for the. I heard Mexicali week. did really well because it's like people come out of the Do Lab and they're like tacos, you know, like. Yeah, Mexicali people. was. Yeah, Mexicali, and they did their um, their blue corn tortilla tacos, which they just debuted uh, last week at the um, at the Taco Madness Festival downtown, and uh, they did those, and I think those were a huge hit and really easy to eat, uh, and I think people really really like those. Um, you know, did I see a picture yeah. of those on your screen at one point? Can I see those? Yeah, it should be. I just put wow. it up. Is it not there? That's a great. That's a great photo. Oh, coming from yeah, Carol. Yeah, that is a great photo. <laughs> was that just like that was just on your plate? Uh, yeah, that was. Yeah, there's no. I bought. I bought and paid for that and, and took it with my <laughs> iPhone. Yeah, there was no. Wow. no uh, Nicely done, Zach. Nicely done. <laughs> I love that. Um, I love that like dusky blue color of yeah. the of a blue corn tortilla. That's just. Sure. That's one of my favorite things. I've been lobbying them to add it to the regular menu at the restaurant, but we'll see if it happens. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And then here's uh, the Baco Mercat stuff that uh, Caroline was talking about. I like that. That one looks better than mine. Like mine just so what looks else? like a burrito. <laughs> if, you've ever, if you've ever been to Baco Mercat, which is you know Joseph Centeno's uh, restaurant. Uh, in downtown LA, they're famous for the baco, the flatbread sandwiches. But obviously, to make all those flatbreads at Coachella, they recognized that it would probably be too tough. So I think they made like 50 or 100 each day and sold them at the very beginning of the day. But they sold out of those like almost immediately. And then for the rest of the day, they sold their bacos as wraps, like wrapped up. And so it's the same filling. This was the shrimp one that I think is on the menu at his restaurant. And it's the same filling, but they wrapped them up in burritos. And these, you know, they were a little pricey. I think maybe like 14 bucks. Uh, a little pricey for, you know, real life. But at Coachella, you know, didn't seem too bad. I mean, when a generic burrito in the general admission area is like 10 or 11 bucks, pay a couple extra bucks for Joseph Centeno's food, I'd say is a pretty great deal. And I actually thought that wrapped up in these burritos, it was. I was pretty excited because, I don't know, this is like, it's like the best of both worlds. You're getting that, you know, festival food that you can just walk with and eat, but then the inside is, like, made by, you know, an amazing L.A. chef. So I was pretty excited about these. How much did both of you guys spend on food, do you think, per day? Ah, that looks so good. I love, I love Baco. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Oh, did we lose that? <laughs> Actually, I, w I wanted to talk about because I thought that Coachella would be no, no, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> um, that the food would be w way more expensive, that the drinks would be way more expensive. And it, I mean, like, the beer was like 10 bucks um, for craft beer, and the cocktails were, was it 14 13 dollars $14? And that's like just about $3 more than they are at the uh, you know, two and three bars. So it wasn't as bad as I thought, um, and that, that made me happy. <laughs> 
it's tough. I think that, you know, it coach, it's just, you listen, like everyone knows how much beers are at Dodger Stadium, but then that, that you know, first game of the season, you're like, what the, like 40 for a beer? Like, come on. Like, so there's always that like initial sticker shock. And then like, it's all about walking through the festival and trying to find, like, I think that's why I was so excited by Sugarfish. Like, because when I found Sugarfish, you're, you're adjusting your expectations about how expensive things are going to be yeah. based on how expensive other things are. So I have no problem paying $7 for a piece of slice, a piece yeah. of spicy pie anymore because I'm just so used to it. And it's one of the reliably decent things at Coachella. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's just, it's Coachella. Like, it makes you feel like, so to find, you know, Sugarfish for, you know, like kind of a reasonable price it, you know, it was kind of, uh, that got me really excited. But I think by the end of the weekend, once you kind of adjust here and see how expensive everything else is, um, you know, you kind of adjust your expectations price-wise. Yeah, I have a question about that spicy pie. We, I, don't, I don't feel like I got this question answered last week. How does spicy pie differ from pizza? Nothing. It's, it doesn't. It's the name is <laughs> spicy pie. It's just the brand name, and okay. it's um, you know, it's it's at every single uh, festival. Okay. They, they're now at most like music festivals, and uh, they kind of have a monopoly on pizza at music festivals. And it's just that thing that you know people are. Here's a this is not a great photo of it, but um, but what spicy pie is? They basically their toppings. The the popular toppings are um, pepperoni pineapple and jalapenos and you kind of can get it in any so they have pepperoni and pineapple pepperoni and jalapeno or jalapeno and pineapple and those are the three most popular slices uh, I got it I got it um, Zach somebody else loved your uh, taco photo as well Kimberly Tronic is tuning in hey Kimberly on Twitter and she says I might have to learn how to cook so I can make some blue corn tortilla tacos <laughs> like the one from Mexicali because they look so good so we've got another we've got another fan for those blue corn tortillas. Oh, there's more spicy pie. <laughs> that looks good. I think the name is what's cute. It's kind of like right. a, you know, the name is the marshmallows. You know, you're like, <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> now, did you guys try any desserts that you guys? Um, were like to die for where you're like I had no idea that fried bacon deep battered coated in chocolate blah 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 was like the greatest thing I ever had hello <laughs> um, I mean salt and straw salt and straw was one of the one of the gourmet uh, options they brought um, was one of the gourmet options they brought this year uh, which is a, fa a really well-known ice cream shop in Portland, oh. which I've never, I've never tried before. So I was really excited to try that, and it it was you know pretty awesome as you can as you can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like really good ice cream, apparently, right? Like I'm not a I, I'm not I'm very picky about my ice cream. Uh, <laughs> it needs yeah, to be it was, good. It was very, yeah, it's of the it's like in the you know. In the uh, you know Humphrey Slocum like buy right like fancy uh, uh, what's it called in L A um, help me out the awesome one in L A Cool House in or the Brentwood Market in the Brentwood Market Cool House is great too but um, the one in the Brentwood Market from the people from uh, oh, I'm trying to blank I don't know I don't like what? the people from Huckleberry. The, the couple from Huckleberry and... Oh, uh, Nathan, Zoe, and... Uh, um, yeah, yeah, they're right. I don't know the name. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, so I, the salt and straw ice cream, my favorite flavor, obviously, was the bourbon and um, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and it, even though, like, so in the midst of that Saturday sandstorm, like at night, I still had to, you know, get one. I was like, I, I don't care. I want one. I don't care if it's cold. So I just, like, you know, grabbed it and ran for cover. And, yeah, it's really, it's very subtle. It's, like, not as boozy as I would have preferred, but <laughs> it was really good. Do you ever have McConnell's bourbon ice cream? 
Oh, wow. I mean, you, you should get it. it. It's a white container, and it's like McConnell. And it is so good. It's like bourbon flavored ice cream with some kind of pecan something. Ooh. in it. It's, it's one of those things where when I die, this might will be my last one. Where? How do I get that? <laughs> oh, you can get it at, like, Gelson's. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, maybe Whole Foods. Uh, I don't know if I've seen it at Ralph's, but Whole Foods has it. It's okay. really good stuff. <laughs> Like right. so good. I'll write I, that down. <laughs> I think I ate. Uh, I think I ate quite a few. And then Zach just uh, sweet rose creamery. Where? What's that? Uh, what I was trying to think. I was completely <laughs> blank. Is is that is that an LA company? That's the Brentwood one he was talking about. I can think of the ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's LA. I was just they weren't there. They were just it. That's what salt straws kind of fits into that whole. I was just naming other like it's that kind of ice cream place. That's awesome. No, I saw. You know, have you guys ever been to Burning Man? When I, when I when I saw that there was a dust storm, I was like, oh, that's nothing. It's like you're in like a you're in the lawn. <laughs> you're like in a beautiful field where people where horses go. Burning Man is like when you're really under siege and like the dust is coming and the food and all that stuff. Um, it would be it'll be interesting to see like if any of those. The things that they discovered, like being able to take some of this gourmet food or, or bring it, will will then move to Burning Man because usually it's kind of where you're, you're kind of limited with what you can make. But that um, no, was pretty cool. I I um, what about the cocktails? Where did you guys go? What about the craft beer tent? Oh, well, the, the cocktails in the Rose Garden was that that was my Garden of Eden. It was it was a haven, you know, from the crowds. Well, the first, on Friday it totally was. Um, but yeah, so two and three, it said Moses' bars uh, had like the back uh, part of the um, rose garden, and so it was um, seven grand, um, Kanya, um, Honeycut, and Las Perlas. Um, and my favorite cocktails were from Honeycut. Um, they were um, they had this one called the alcoholic strawberry cream soda, and it's vodka, and it's actually it was really like it just hit the spot on a hot day. Um, and then they had for seven grand they had their frozen Irish coffee, um, which is really good too. <laughs> so oh um, my god, that sounds so good. Yeah, I never thought to was, make yeah that sounds really good like that. That's brilliant. <laughs> they now, are actually, they, oh go ahead. I was gonna say, are they gonna be bringing any of those flavors to their to their places, their bars? Yeah, well, um, the uh, the Irish coffee was they debuted that at seven grand on um, what's that, St. Patrick's Day. They have like actually a slushy machine. Where that uh, that just makes this amazing Irish coffee, and um yeah all those or all those uh, cocktails there are actually available at their bars now. And and why don't Renee you and I know about this? <laughs> I feel like we're uh, we're a little bit behind. I'm gonna have to check my Instagram this feed. Is oh, this is out. <laughs> now is there any? That's where we need to go yeah. for take the show on the road and go get. Some <laughs> Good idea. Now, was there anything that you guys tried where you're like, oh, this didn't meet my expectations, or um, you could see that it just had some issues, but it can be perfected, or any 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 hiccups? You want us to talk shit about? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I don't. I don't necessarily want to say the fact. I'm just saying. Like, I want to, I want to name names. <laughs> We are going to be back this weekend. <laughs> you, want to be, you, want to be, you want to go back next year. Um, I, will say, I will say this. My first stop was Night and Market uh, for the Thai food, and it was my very first stop of the weekend, and I saw their menu, and the prices were – they were kind of expensive, and I had a little bit of, like, sticker shock moment, and, you know, there wasn't any, like – when you get, like, the, the Asian – there's, like, a some famous, like, classic – you know, Coachella food booths, like Asian barbecue, and there's like a crappy like pad thai booth, and they all have these like combos where you can spend like 10 or 12 bucks and get like two or three things or whatever, which is very exciting for people like me who enjoy the variety. Uh, and so, but uh, by day two, Night and Market had completely changed their menu and they added combos and dropped the prices a little bit, and I was very excited by that. And I think that... Uh, uh, they're going to do, I think they did much better on Saturday and Sunday, um, and then I'll probably do much better this weekend, hopefully, because uh, some of the stuff they had was just amazing. Some of the stuff, like their pad thai was like, listen, like you, you know, it's festival food, you know, and there's only so much you can do in these small booths. So if your expectations for like, I mean, it's still a pad thai that's made 
in a booth like that's tiny and so if you're expecting food as good as their restaurant like the pad thai kind of fell a little bit short you know when you rate it against their amazing restaurant food but the larb and the party wings uh were super awesome and i okay, would definitely I gotta know what larb is what is larb larb's like a thai uh it's like a ground uh it's like ground meat i think usually pork um and it's um not necessarily served hot. I mean, it can be, but it can be cold, and it's just like a street food that's uh, it's usually spicy and sour and maybe a little bit sweet. And it's uh, his his version. This was it was perfect fair food. Now, did you guys check out the farmers market? Uh, I think the farmers market was in the farmers market was in the I believe in the camping area, um, so uh, I know they set up like stuff like that in camping because that's where people are they're going to be living there for three days and maybe oh, interesting. yeah really um, cool. so I didn't check it out this year I went in past years but uh, but not this year I'm pretty sure that's where it was. You know the last time I went to Coachella was 2008, <laughs> and it has changed. I mean, you used to be able to buy like one day passes. We would we would drive there in the morning of. We would party, do our stuff. We'd try to stay for the last because it was of course the whoever was like headlining, and I would get so tired and I'd be like, oh my gosh, we got to go home. We'd drive home, have to walk back to the car drive home and it's like we could barely make it we could j just I don't know and then I was thinking I was looking at the pictures of these like gourmet camping tents and I'm thinking what a different experience <laughs> <laughs> did you guys have any friends who stayed in any of those do uh, I, have, I have any friends that have ten thousand oh. dollars <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> Well, you know, it was like if you, I don't know. I, I'm always, I'm just amazed when I see like very young people, like 17, 18 years old, going and you know, going to some of these places. I'm always, um, I'm impressed if, that they're able I, to convince their parents. If I had any friends who did the camping tents at Coachella, I would be doing this hangout from their private jet right now, <laughs> on our way to Vegas. Your Wi-Fi might be a little iffy though. It'd be a little. <laughs> No, yeah, no, 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 a lot of money for good Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I keep getting my, um, my Twitter, my Twitter stuff keeps going off. I can't, I've been trying to figure out how to turn my volume down on my, on my iPad. So if you guys hear a little ding, ding, ding. Um, you know, I was, I was impressed with, um, just the, the variety of food, the vegan stuff. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, we're both vegetarians. Um, what did you think of that stuff, like that variety? Because I, I don't know if you get what I get, which is basically every time you go to a restaurant, they're always like, oh, there's a dinner salad available. Yeah. Or you're like, if I have to eat another salad, I'm going to lose my mind. Um, I, what just, was I, I don't eat salads. I, I'm a vegetarian and I hate salads. <laughs> I How do you do that? Food. I just, well, okay, so... What was awesome about Coachella was that, yeah, they had, like, even not, and it wasn't even VIP, but they had, like, vegan things, vegan booths in, like, the regular places. I, it just said vegan, whatever it said. And um, so it's, like, there, there was definitely, I did not go hungry, and I was so happy. <laughs> like, and then, at, like, at Baco Mercat, they had that caramelized cauliflower with the, like, that was one of my favorites, like, the sauce on it. And then... Was it um, Mohawk Bend also had this like buffalo cauliflower, which like was spicy and everything. Um, so yeah, it was like it was it was awesome to not have to like you know go is this fried in like animal fat or you know it was just like it was safe and I could eat and feel good. So yeah, it was awesome. So I think Melody's trying to show us if Melody can. I, uh, I don't know if you have if you have cameraman on right now. But if you can show us that picture, what is that? Is that the cauliflower? Yeah, that's the um, Baco Mercat one. And you just, that like, looks so... What is on that? I'm not sure. Zach, do you know? <laughs> I'm not sure, but it was like a... I don't know. Uh, deliciousness? I know. It was ambrosia. I don't know. <laughs> but you pair that with the, uh, the uh, veggie uh, wrap. And it was just like this really full meal, and you're just sitting in the rose garden with your cocktail and that cauliflower and the wrap, and yeah, it was awesome. I, I'm sorry, I keep saying awesome a lot, but that's, <laughs> that's something I would wait. I finally oh, got go back to I missed the part about the cauliflower. I was looking forward yeah. to that. Oh, <laughs> there <continue>. it is. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, look yeah. at that. Renee, yeah. I think there was also a sweet cauliflower, too. Look well, the buffalo one was a spicy one at um, Mohawk. Did I you say there was one? Oh, caramelized. I was caramelized, thinking, yeah. I was thinking <laughs> caramel, like dipped yeah. in caramel. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm like a sweet person. Do you guys find any desserts that you are like anyone who's going to Coachella this this week? Um, because I mean, are you guys going back? I'm not. I am not either. Once once a year is the <laughs> year is enough. Uh, um, so if 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 you were to give a recommendation to people who are going, um, let's walk through like all the types of food. Like for for breakfast, I mean, what time does it start? It starts at like 3 p.m. Eleven. Oh, yeah. So there's nothing like for breakfast there. You should probably eat before you go. Well, the camp camping area has like short cake. I think short cake or short order, but it's so far away. I think. I mean, I didn't even try to go there, even though I really wanted to check it out. So. Um. Can you go there? Can is it is it open? Like it's like you know how before, it's like you could walk through the parking lot to get to, which was crazy parking. Yeah. You can walk to the parking lot to get to um, to the actual like ticket booth. Can you walk out to go to the camping ground so anyone can be in the camping grounds, or do you need to have, like, a certain pass? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I actually, I know a couple, I know if you have a VIP pass, you definitely can. Um, oh. But I didn't try going this year, but you definitely have to, like, uh, can yourself in and out of every section. Um, but that's why, that's why I didn't even try. It was too far to walk to okay. try. Even the VIP parking was far to walk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you say One time, it's too far to oh, walk, you're talking about, like, how, like, roughly how long? An hour. Oh, I mean, you walk, yeah, you walk miles <laughs> and miles. Wow, okay. It was so, far. And then you're walking through all these people, so it's just, and then it's in the right. sun. I mean, I, I, I'm too old for that, but it's right. just like. No, that it's just gives me just a little tired. sense of the scope. I've never been there, so I'm intrigued by that. I gotta tell you, in 2008, we got tickets from a guy who was doing sound. It's for some reason his kids didn't want to go, and he's like, Babette, he's like, do you want two tickets? And I'm like, yes. And he goes, I even have VIP parking. And we're like, great. VIP parking at that time in 2008 was, okay, I don't know if it's the same kind of stage setup where it's like, there's the main stage is like near the entrance, and then you walk, and then at the corner, there's another small stage, and then like, Perpendicular is the Sahara tent. I don't know if that's the same setup, but that's how it no, kind of was. It sounds way closer than it was. In, like, oh, right it was now. like all in one area. Like, <laughs> but between the Sahara tent and the other stage was like a doorway to like a gate. Like they, someone was standing there, and you could not go in or whatever. On the other side of that was the parking lot for the VIP. So literally, and you could walk as VIP. You could walk the backstage. So instead of us having to like literally go from, um, and I don't know if we had like special backstage, I don't know if there was something different, but instead of us having to walk through the actual event, we could walk around each of the stages. It was actually very cool, like this whole kind of, like at Disneyland where there's like a back area, it's the same thing where you have like this kind of cool view of um, just like the behind the scene, the stages, and you could see people getting ready to go on, and like it was really neat. And I mean, it was, and we could actually go in and out privileges. So if we wanted to go get a jacket, we would just walk out, grab our jacket, and come back in. What was the What was I mean, the food like then, Babette? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Don't, so, don't talk about spicy pie like that. Uh, no, it was, <laughs> it was. I the only thing I could eat that I thought was like, we, we actually kind of treated ourselves, and Eric and I talk about this all the time, is uh, this like pupusa, or um, it, may have, it may have been an Indian samosa, but it was like this, actually it was an Indian samosa, and it was like this cool little thing where we just felt like we were treating ourselves to something delicious, and it was like the best tasting thing, it had so much, you know, spices and whatever, and now it's like we laugh because we look at the list now, and we're like, oh my gosh, this is like, you're never going to find in L.A. all these great restaurants within such a short area of each other. Like, the, every food item you can get is delicious. So I think it's cool what they're doing, for sure. But it's definitely different. It's not the same. I think the first time we went was 2003. Like, this is before Instagram, Facebook. Nobody was sharing pictures. No one was on their phones. People were actually taking real cameras. <laughs> 
which was really bulky. Wow. Yeah, I have a whole bunch. I should have actually showed some pictures. I looked, tried to look to see if I had any food photos. And that's the difference between what my life was back in 2002. I was directing and producing television to now in food where I don't have any pictures of food in 2003. Like, it's almost like my menu did not even exist. So. Well, it's true. It's like, why would you take pictures of, like, waste your film on pictures of food? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so let's talk. Go ahead. I thought you were going to say, uh, why would you bother to eat if you couldn't take pictures and post things? <laughs> exactly. That's now. That's now. That's now. Yeah. So for lunch, what would you guys recommend to people who are going? Um, I mean, if you if you have if you have rose garden passes, definitely sugar fish. Um, you know, especially because by nighttime it's super packed, like more so than if you go first thing, you know, first part of the day, it'll probably be way less crowded. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, night and market, Mexicali, I mean, all the new options are are pretty great for the old stuff. I don't know. I mean, I still love to eat. I still love, like, all the Coachella classics, but I guess I feel like there's some nostalgia in there. I guess I wouldn't send someone for crab fries and corn dogs unless that was something that they already had eaten and loved. Yeah, it's not going to compete with... Uh, with but as far as, as far as if you're, if you're looking for, like, the budget options, like the options that are, like, the best bang for your buck, I mean, Mexicali tacos, uh, a carne asada taco... A generic carne asada taco in the general admission area is five dollars. That Mexicali blue corn taco was four dollars. So you're actually paying less for something better. I don't know if that'll change this weekend when they realize that they could be charging a lot more. Yeah. Um, and then same with the sugarfish thing. Obviously, that's. Uh, have I mentioned how much I love the sugarfish booth yet? Did I mention that? No, not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, crab fries sound pretty awesome. That might be a reason to drive out there. <laughs> well, you know, I have to say, and they look pretty awesome too. I'll show you the photo. Um, they are they are a Coachella. I mean, the corn dog and crab fries. They're actually at the same booth. The corn dog and crab fries. It's what I call the the best combo festival food booth uh, ever invented because you get two of the best things in one booth. But um, the crab fries look awesome. I will say this. I mean, like, you know, you probably shouldn't be eating mayonnaise crab meat, like, in a desert uh, when it's 110 <laughs> degrees out. And they probably are not – they're not as good as they look, but they're still – they're a Coachella classic. I mean, it's uh, – yeah. And now – Oh. Melody, um, Mel, our producer Melody has uh, one of Caroline's photos up. Is that pad thai? Oh yeah, that's the uh, vegan pad thai from Night Market. Um, that looks so good. But I actually have that at night, and it was like it was comfort food, and you know, it was just I was starving, and I saw that on the menu, and I'm like, oh my god, I have to have that, and yeah, it just made me happy. Oh my god, Zach, that looks amazing. <laughs> was it easy to find the food? <laughs> The crab fries? That, the night market was. Was it? I mean, was it easy for you guys to find the food? Um. Well, I like the the rose garden stuff. Yeah, but like when it was when it was crossroads, um, and night market, I was like, where is it? You know, I it's I didn't realize it was like down closer to Do Lab. Um. So you just have to keep walking around, and um, they have this map, but I I couldn't really. Understand it. It's not like an idiot, but they just had like little pictures, and you just had to figure it out. What is that, Zach? Any any way to give like anyone who's going there any tips on understanding that map better? Um, Carolyn, I well, if you're looking for complaints the... about the map, so was that? Not... Oh, I did hear, hear my some complaints, complaints about oh. the map, so you're not alone. Oh, okay, good. I mean, they ha it was cool. They had these information booths all around, so. You didn't have to go to this one place all the time to look, you know. Um, but I was like, where's the craft beer barn? And it turned out the craft beer barn was this little beer bottle with three X's on it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you just, I had to know where it was. For, I had to walk around and find it and then realize, oh, that's what that meant on that map. But, um, yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, most people aren't real like, the, the classic Coachella booths, for the most part, have been in the same place 
every year for the past God knows how many years. So, you know, you know where the spicy pie booth that you eat at is. You know where to get your corn dog or whatever. Um, so it's definitely, it'll definitely be a learning process. It probably won't help also that they're going to move things for this weekend also, which I think they're going to be announcing in the next day or two where some of the stuff is moving. I think the big problem with the terrace thing was the terrace dining area is huge and extended all the way down to do lab. And you had to actually walk down there. It wasn't like, it wasn't like a through way. Like people weren't walking through that area. So unless you were going all the way to do lab, you would not have seen night and mark. Well, if you made it as far as the beer garden, where um, Mohawk Bend and those places were, you still had to go even a little bit farther to hit Night Market, Mexicali, you know, and some of the other food options. But the only way you would have seen that is if you walked all the way down. And, oh, same with Salt and Straw and uh, Stumptown Coffee. And so I think and that's you got to walk the all the way the other way. Yeah, and I think, <laughs> part of, I think part of the reason, that's part of the reason why they're moving a lot of those vendors to a different location for Can the second. Say it again. They're going to move the yurts? I don't know. They they, they yeah. couldn't confirm. I know that Mexicali and Night Market are definitely moving to the VIP for mm -hmm. second weekend, but they wouldn't, the, the official, like, PR, like, they're not, they're, they haven't announced any of the official. I, I also heard that Crossroads dropped out. Um, like, they're not coming back? Yeah, unless I misunderstood that. But, yeah, because, like, when I went on Saturday night to go to Crossroads and that, Tent or that booth was completely empty, but there was no sign saying that they weren't there. And um, and it, that the night park market people were like, "Yeah, they just up and left." And yeah. I asked about it, and they're like, "Yeah, everybody's being moved to VIP, but they had dropped. Crossroads had dropped out." Yeah, I mean, I think what people need to understand is with festivals this large and this, you know, with so many moving parts, like nothing ever goes well the first time around, you know, or the first year, or and it takes a lot of tweaking, and you know, like. You have to be patient. Some things are going to work well. Some things aren't. Some people are going to come back. Some people aren't. Like, and you know, in the end, I think the stuff that does work, I think you'll see again this weekend, and then you'll see again next year. And you know, the stuff that doesn't work, you know, you won't. Mm -hmm. I hope so. That was I really just cool. see that conversation when you like walk up and you're like, "Where, where are the people?" <laughs> yeah. And the other booth's like, "Oh no, they left." <laughs> 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 They're like, yeah, it just took off or whatever. Like, because I thought, oh, because of the sandstorm, and like you look into their booth and there was like grit everywhere. But um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Is that, did you hear? Did you hear why they, they left? Was they again? Did you hear why they left? Or was it, or do you do you know? Um, well, I heard is that, that it wasn't doing as well as they had thought. But then that's that's why I thought they were moving them to VIP. Because like yeah. they uh, they didn't have the uh, exposure. The yeah, and people have to people also have to understand that like you know most of the most of the vendors at Coachella you know the the those vendors are all you know this is their business this is what they do they know exactly how much food to bring what to charge they're you know they they this is what they do the restaurants who show up they have to bring their staff. They have to pay their staff for the whole weekend, who are normally working at the, you know, at their restaurants. They have to acclimate themselves to a completely different, you know. So it's it's a very difficult thing, and I don't think people realize how hard it is for some of these fancier restaurants to come and do something like this. Um, you know, so it, you know, so hopefully, you know, for most of them, it'll end up being something where they don't, you know, and you're promised like ninety thousand people, but then depending on your location or where you are, you're not actually going to see. 90,000 people walk by your booth every day and you know it, it's a it's definitely a tough thing and that's why you know if people are interested in seeing more stuff like this you know you should definitely go out support the vendors that you really like and you know not necessarily complain about the prices which I'm pretty bad at actually so it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, it's definitely tough cuz a, a lot goes into you know uh, coming down I mean actually night and market uh, song, they actually closed the restaurant in Echo Park. It's a brand new restaurant. They've only been open a few weeks. They closed the restaurant for last weekend and this coming weekend because Chris, the chef, didn't want to not be there if, you know, a you know Jonathan Gold or a critic came into the restaurant. It's brand new. Wow. And so they decided to close. So not only are they not making money from their restaurant, you know, and they have to pay their whole staff to come for the entire weekend. And it's tough. It's, it's definitely a... You know, so it's important that if people want the fancy food, they should uh, they should get out and support this weekend. 
You know, it's amazing. it reminds me of um, South by Southwest because you, if you go and you produce an event during that conference, like everything is increased, hotels, restaurants, you, you're so limited with your space that it's almost like twice, three times as expensive to basically produce an event there. So um, to bring a whole staff there, I didn't even think about that. How well, they're I gonna actually, sleep. like for the bars, I had originally thought that they were going to use their, um, like Coachella has their catering company that they use. Um, and I know for the beer barn that, that all the people were pouring beer were the catering company people, so you can walk up to them and ask them about the beer. I mean, you could, but it was very limited compared to, like, if you went to Tony Dart's Way or whatever. So I told you that the, the craft craft cocktail places were going to have um, the, the catering people, but it was actually the um, two and three bartenders, which was awesome. You know, um, it was great to, like, then you knew the quality of the drinks. They're like, here's your free drink. Just kidding. <laughs> They we did. Are. I just gave him a big tip. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know me. You know me. <laughs> if you want me to tip later. So what are we looking at in this picture that Melody has? This is a. This looks really good. Is that oh, the frozen? Yeah, the frozen uh, Irish coffee. Oh. Um, and it's actually made with real coffee, so it was like the best of both worlds: coffee and booze. The Jameson. But, yeah. Hey, Melody. Oh, I don't gosh. know if that is if so Melody. brilliant. Uh, I was gonna say, Melody, can you put a full shot on that? I can't tell because my 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 camera is not changing as as rapidly as um as it normally does. So I just want to make sure people see that coffee because that looked really good. Was that with? Did you say that was with Jameson? Yeah, Jameson, and then an actual coffee. So I love how when, the when I see when Ren Renee sees the food, she's like, ah, oh, this looks so good. When I see the booze, I'm like, is yeah, that Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so can you close up on that? <laughs> Well, we have about five more minutes left. Um, any advice that you guys have for people who are going to Coachella this weekend? Like, what what to avoid? Like, um, you know, at the top of the day, don't get the hot ice cream because it will melt in five minutes. Like, any tips that you guys have that can help those folks who are um, going to experience this for the first time? Well, I think you should bring, you definitely should bring hand sanitizer. <laughs> I think number one. <laughs> if you're worried about getting dirty, don't go to the No, but it's like, yeah. But it's just, it's just <laughs> the bathrooms are so disgusting towards the end of the day, you know. Oh, okay, this is, actually, I don't know, Zach, do you know if they have, like, um, like those really nice trailer bathrooms in the general admission place? Uh, I think it's pretty safe to say they don't. <laughs> Because like, if you go in VIP <laughs> by the main stage, it's like all porta potties. But if you go in the back, you have to know that it's back there. Those like trailer bathrooms. So, right. Uh, if you uh, want VIP, go for those. <laughs> I would say my my biggest tip for Coachella is to really enjoy it. Be very rich. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> No, I mean, it's, uh, I, you know, it's tough. As a person who loves food, I think the most, the best way to enjoy Coachella is ideally, like, to not show up till, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock because that's when the sun is starting to go down a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you're, and then you can kind of make it to the end. Like, if you show up at noon, I mean, mo that's why most people go to parties, hang out by the pool in their hotel, you know, and then don't show up at 4 or 5 o'clock. But then for the food and stuff, I was, you know, so every... I feel like the past couple of years that I've gone, I've been excited to get in, try the food, um, you know, and, and kind of run around. And then, you know, you're so hot and by 5 or 6 o'clock. So it's kind of tough, but that's when the food is, you know, there's not a lot of people uh, eating the food. You know, there's the lines are shorter. And uh, so, you know, you just have to decide what's more important to you. So do um, like the, the Norm's early bird dinner at like 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a little bit off. So you're like, where, where, where do the people over 40 eat? <laughs> do, I get my, do I get my discount, my senior discount? <laughs> yeah, I agree going a little bit later because I, I for, personally speaking, I can't enjoy eating if it's freaking 115 degrees. <laughs> it's yeah. just too, even though they had like a bunch of shady areas, you know, it's just, I just couldn't. Renee, oh. those are those are good tips. Anything else? Hey, hey, Renee, have you ever been to a music festival? I, you know, I've been to some music festivals. I've never been to any of these big ones like uh, Coachella or Bonnaroo or anything like that. I have to say, I'm not a huge crowd person, so I'm not. That's just not my thing. 
You know what, Renee, you should have done last weekend? You should have um, did what we did, which was on our iPad, we turned on YouTube, and then we shot it to Apple TV, and we could watch almost the entire, like, all three stages uh, on Coachella really? the whole weekend. Yeah, I was like, I was like in my pajamas, I'm like, oh, it's 11.30 at night, and I'm like, man, it's really hot in Coachella, but I'm in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> I heard lots of people that, that. that is genius. <laughs> Oh my gosh, is, Zach, what is that? Are those cronuts? Oh yeah, last thing, yeah, last thing uh, for people who are into the sweets. This, I think, was like an un, an unsung, uh, oh, yeah. like hidden gem of Coachella. Mark Trombino, who's a really famous uh, music producer, um, opened up a donut shop called Donut Friend um, in uh, Boyle Heights, I think is where it is, East LA or Boyle Heights uh, a year or two ago. And he's actually at Coachella in the Heineken tent, which is completely open to the public. It's not uh, selling Donut Friend donuts. So if you are into the desserts, I know you had mentioned desserts earlier. Uh, you and they all have. The donuts? What'd you say? Do you have a closer picture of the donuts? <laughs> I don't. No, that's it. That's the one I got. But all the donuts have amazing, uh, funny names from bands that he's produced, like uh, the Bacon 182. <laughs> uh, and uh, Fudge Gazi and uh, Jets to Basil, which is my favorite one, which I think is this one, which is this one right here. Can you see my arrow or no? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Were, they, were those free or did you have to pay for those? No, you had to pay for them. Yeah, oh. you had to pay for them, but yeah, good those stuff. so good, Zach. Wow. Yep. Well, cool, guys. All right. Well, I want to make sure that people know where to go and find all of your feeds so that they can go and look and find the photos that you took and also just be able to, you know, track you guys because I know both of you guys are constantly out at great restaurants trying new cocktails. Where can people find you on the web? Where's that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'm uh, midtownlunch.com, and foodisthenewrock.com is where I do all my music and food stuff. Uh, and then food is the new rock on Instagram and Midtown Lunch LA on Instagram and Twitter. Now you gotta tell me what food is the new rock. You have to tell me how the evolution of that real quick because I yeah, sure. I, um, I yeah, love that name. Yeah, I I started off in radio like I, that's my background. Uh, and my I started my food blog while working in radio in New York, and it took off, and I ended up quitting radio and doing you know becoming a professional fatso, and then. Food is the New Rock is something I started like a, a couple years ago to kind of get back into the whole radio thing, and it's a podcast. Uh, every week we talk to a chef about music or a musician about food. So this week's episode is uh, Albert Hammond Jr. from The Strokes. We talk to him about like Japanese food, and uh, and yeah, it's fun. It's just like uh, I just noticed that a ton of people like me who were in the music industry were kind of moving over to the food industry, and bands love food, and chefs love music, and so... It's just kind of a fun podcast where we do that every week. That is so cool. Because I, I, I went to the website a couple days ago for the first time, and I was like, what is this? Is this a new <laughs> thing? And I've been meaning to I'm, – I'm driving myself to – I'm going to Yosemite um, next weekend or next week, and I'm thinking – I need to download a whole bunch of, like, books on tape, and I'm like, I'm going to download some of your podcasts. Yeah, totally that, free. Totally free on iTunes. Very exciting. That's very cool. I love that. Now, Caroline, what about you? Um, so I do Caroline on crack.com, um, and I also write for um, LA Mag. Can you see that? Or I blog for them. Oh, yeah. I think you just went. Oh, no, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my uh, uh, post that I did for LA Mag Digest blog about my favorite stuff at Coachella. What are the two beers? Are those yours? Oh, that's at the Craft Beer Barn. Yeah, that is the, what was it, um, Port Brewing Mongo and Dogfish Head Bitches Brew. Um, Ten dollars <laughs> each, really worth it. <laughs> the orange is the that amber is so pretty. Yeah, it's really good. That is amazing. But, uh, well, yeah. I definitely think we lost Renee, so sorry about uh, that. She she sends her love. Um, she wants uh, to make sure. She, yeah, you guys know how much we appreciate your time for being with us um, tonight. Um, if you guys when when you guys have some news or something that's coming up that you think is really cool, will you guys come back to kitchen party? Oh yeah, thank you. Definitely. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Yeah. That's <laughs> Zach, what's that? That's my goodbye Coachella photo. Aww. <laughs> yeah, uh, of the cool house, cool house truck and the uh, and the cliched uh, Ferris the cliched uh, Ferris wheel, yeah. 
And the palm trees with the lights, that's awesome. Yeah, the whole thing, yeah. It's beautiful. Renee, I was that's already saying goodbye time. for you. <laughs> oh, I got bounced out again. Oh, I'm <laughs> like, so sorry. Renee sends her love. <laughs> <laughs> you all made Renee hungry, so she had to go get something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need a refill. I'm going to get a refill Yay. real quick. Um, yeah, cheers, you guys. Oh, uh, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Happy oh, Coachella yeah. kitchen party. <laughs> I, I, I forgot to tell you that we drink on the show. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> we, pro we progressively get a little bit drunk. So, oh, uh, yeah. Next time. <laughs> Zach, like, yeah. Zach is like, let's hit rewind on this thing. <laughs> I wish, I wish you would watch this, uh, watch this hangout before coming on this hangout. That's right. You know, I, I always tell people, I'm like, feel free to bring a drink. In fact, I think a lot of, like, we've had so many great bloggers here um, and cookbook authors. Like Sarah Carey from, from, from Everyday Food was like, can I bring some wine? I mean, yeah. it's, just, it's, so, it's so great when they do that. Um, and the next week, we, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, it's actually better when you're drinking. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll remember this show. It'll be awesome. Um, for next week's show, we have uh, Stephanie Manley, who's going to be on the show, with a couple more people. I think maybe I'm trying to get Andrew Wilder to come, too, as well with Blog Tutor to talk about blog security and also security, like what happens when you wake up and your Facebook page has been taken over and you don't know how to access it and you can't reach anyone on Facebook, like what do you do? Um, Stephanie Manley, that happened to her and I saw that on Google Plus and I was like, oh my god, this is a great topic, like let's talk about this. So we're going to be doing that next week and then we have a whole bunch more, um, I think like 10 more shows that we already have lined up which we're going to be putting on Google Plus. Follow us on YouTube, Big Space TV. Uh, also, bakespace.com if you want great recipes, uh, if you want to produce your own cookbook, Cookbook Cafe. And uh, once again, uh, you can find Renee. She's Daily Dish uh, at the LA Times. She's writing all the great food content along with a whole bunch of other writers who are literally dishing out some amazing stuff. Renee, do you have any last words? I don't no, know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? I want crab fries now. <laughs> Actually, you know what? There was one. There was one question on Twitter. Somebody wants to know: Can you get spicy pie around here? No, you got to go to a food festival. I mean, a music festival. There are only, only music festivals. Okay, Maybe, cool. You know, Renee, can you tweet that person and let them know? Because most likely, they didn't wait to the end of the show to hear that. Yes, I will. I will. Thank you. It was All right, guys. I will let her know. Oh, awesome. All right, guys, we will see you later. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 <laughs>